welcome to FAME. It's a little different this year, but I hope you'll still have fun and join us. Today, I'm on an imaginary fishing trip. Have you ever been out on the ocean? Just imagine it, relaxing out on your boat, waiting for the fish to bite. Can you feel the warm sun on your skin? The fresh sea breeze and the water splashing up onto the boat to cool you off? Those are the things that our artist was trying to get you to think about in his painting. And our artist today is Winslow Homer. He's an American artist and he drew a lot of pictures of the sea and painted a lot of pictures of the ocean and things going on around there. Mr. Homer was born and his mother was an artist, so he was interested in art from a young age, but he was completely self-taught, meaning that he never had an art teacher um, and he never went to a special art school. He just kept practicing and practicing until art became a talent for him. And he was hired by magazines and eventually also got a job drawing pictures for the Civil War. And if you look at some of his art, he drew pictures of what he saw at the war and then sent them back to be used with news stories. And then eventually he started drawing pictures mainly of the ocean because that is where he lived. These are some of his paintings. And we wanna talk about a couple of the techniques that he used in his art. He, I'll set this back down here. In this picture that we're looking at today, if you go outside and you look out in the distance, there's a place where the land or the water meets the sky. And sometimes when we're just learning to draw, we draw it like this, where we draw the land or the water at the bottom and the skies at the top, and there's nothing in between. But in real life, it's not really like that. So our artist today has a very distinct line where the sky and the water meet. That's called the horizon. When we see the land or the water meet the sky, it's called the horizon. And so we call this line the horizon line. And that should sound familiar to you. You probably have heard of horizontal lines, meaning that it goes across, comes from the same word. So this is the horizon line, where the land and the, or the water and the sky meet. In this picture, <coughs> the horizon line is right here, about halfway through the picture. In this picture, the horizon line is all the way down here so that he can focus more on what was in the sky. So the horizon line can help emphasize the part of the picture that you want most. So we see a lot of fluffy clouds in this picture. And if you can imagine being out on the ocean, what color is the sky? What color is the water? Well, usually we just say blue. But if you look at his painting, there's a lot of white, gray, green, even some yellows. And if you look at water, there are definitely a lot of colors to reflect everything else that's around it. The boat in the water is brown. And there, so there are a lot of other colors besides just blue. When you look at this painting, there's this boat right here and there's also these boats over here. Well, do you think that this boat is a bigger boat or a smaller boat than this one? If you look at it, this boat has a lot of sails. And so if we were in that boat, it would be much bigger than this one. But in the painting, it looks a lot littler. 
And this one here is a littler still. And that's because the farther the way something is, the smaller it is. That's perspective. So we can tell that even though this boat is a lot smaller in the painting, that's just because it's farther away. And this one is very far away. So it looks really, really small. Another thing that he used to show distance was the colors. These colors here are bright. Bright because we're right there and can see them. The colors on this boat are very muted. That's because when something's far away, you can't see the colors as well. So it seems a lot more subtle. So these boys are out on their boat, probably on their way back home from fishing because you can see the fish in the bottom of the boat and have enjoyed a nice adventure out on the ocean. Mr. Homer also painted a lot of other children, as you can see in this picture over here. And he never had a family of his own, but he did allow children to come and play around in his studio when he wasn't working. So our music today is music written for another kind of boat ride, but the boat was very different. If you can see this picture, this was a kind of boat written to go down the river. The king would go down the river on a boat with a bunch of people, and there would be another boat alongside him for entertainment, and that's where they had the music. <clears throat> Our composer today is George Friedrich Handel, and he wrote music for the, the king and, and these people to go down the river and be entertained. When Mr. Handel was just little, his dad did not want him to be a musician, but he would sneak into the attic of his house and play the clavichord in the middle of the night. I'm not really sure how that worked because if my kids were practicing the piano, it would definitely wake me up. But he practiced and became quite a musician. I'm gonna play just a little bit of what the clavichord sounds like. So you can tell that it sounds a little bit like the piano, but it was a smaller instrument that sounded a little bit different. But Mr. Handel wrote this piece and they played it uh, on the barge as they went up and down the river with the king. This is a piece of music that was in, written in the style we call Baroque, meaning that it's very rhythmic, the rhythm stays the same, and it's kind of fancy. So if you listen to this a little bit again, you can tell that it's, it has a lot of extra notes added in, and even when it's supposed to be a long held out note, they trill it, they, have a, they make it go back and forth. So listen just a minute longer. And this is the beginning of the song, so you can hear it played with different instruments. They did have a lot of different instruments, mostly string instruments, meaning it's instruments that are played um, with a bow that rubs across strings to make the sound, like violins and cellos. And this is what it sounds like.
a style called Baroque. This was back in the 1700s. And if you can just imagine, there weren't cars, there weren't all kinds of noises along the streets like there are nowadays. So these barges would just be going down the river and you could hear that kind of music playing. And to finish up, I want to play you just a little bit of one more song written by Handel that I think will sound familiar to you. probably one that you've heard. Mr. Handel's song became very well known, but he wrote a lot of music all in the Baroque style. And so that is our fame lesson for today. When you go to the library, take a closer look at this painting and see what, you, what else you can notice about this um, painting of breezing up from Winslow Homer. And we'll see you next time.